Whenever these jokes pop up, you know you're in for some big time laughs. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 big time rush running gags. For this list, we're looking back at some of the funniest character quirks, catchphrases, and all around recurring jokes that tend to pop up every now and then in this musical comedy show. If this is your first time laughing at these repetitive jokes, expect spoilers ahead. Give us the spray. Easy. Now! Let your dad activate! Oh! <laughs> Number 10. Gustavo blowing his stack. Managing a rebellious boy band takes a lot of patience, something that Gustavo seriously lacks. Whenever something goes awry or someone touches a raw nerve, especially the dogs, Gustavo is guaranteed to lose his temper in a huge way. <laughs> Before you kill them and explain what all that is, check out the new song from your new songwriters. How bad is it? His rage is powerful enough to cause a small earthquake or even smash through solid concrete. He's even shown to yell in his sleep. And finally, a small downtown earthquake today has seismologists baffled. It might not seem like it, but it's probably for the best that Gustavo has such a short fuse, since it's part of what makes him such a passionate songwriter. And seeing him perpetually calm could spell disaster for the band. It's a blood pressure monitor, and it goes off when he's stressed, so... Stay away from me for the next 20 bars! Number 9. She Will Be Mine Whenever a pretty lady catches James's eye, he loudly declares to the heavens she will be mine before his quest to woo her begins, or continues. She will be mine! In the later seasons, James sets his sights on one girl in particular, Lucy, the new rocker girl of the Palm Woods. However, while James has swagger to spare, Lucy isn't even remotely interested because, let's face it, James can be a little self-absorbed. You will be mine! Nevertheless, James doesn't give up so easily in the game of love, and we have to give him credit in his persistence. While it seems like a fruitless endeavor, maybe Lucy will see the good inside James, and maybe she finally will be his. Who knows? Not teaming up with you. And don't say you will be mine, because I'll never be yours. Oh, you will be! Number eight, Camille's method acting. Oh, Camille, not now. Please, of course I'll take you back. Camille has been nicknamed the Method Actress Queen of the Palm Woods, an appropriate title since when she prepares for an acting role, she goes the extra mile to get into character. She's so dedicated to the craft that she'll spend the majority of the day in costume or even bring some explosive props to an audition. And I'm a robot. If it's so wrong, why were you programmed to love? But what about the bomb? On the one hand, it's hilarious to watch Camille put someone on the spot with her more dramatic performances. On the other hand, we're once again shown how risky method acting is if you get too into character. And needless to say, Camille gets carried away way too quickly. Shh! I know not of this Camille. I am Special Agent Mila Stark. And right now, El Presidente is massing forces, and the rebels need my help. Oh. Number 7. The Giant Turd Song during the boys' first audition, Kendall decides to give Gustavo an earful with a short but sweet diss track, as he calls the blowhard manager a giant turd. To Kendall's credit, Gustavo can be a turd most of the time, and this little outburst did help bring the band together. Well, can I at least hear the giant turd song? Oh, you're such a turd. Oh yeah, giant turd. Now whenever the boys need a good laugh or just want to bust their manager's chops, they happily start singing this goofy little number, usually ending with James belting it out. Oh, you're such a turd. Oh yeah, a giant turd. And you look like a turd and you smell like a turd. Oh, you're such a turd. While not one of BTR's official tracks, it's always a treat whenever they sing this silly, catchy earworm again, as long as they don't try to film a music video of it. Oh, you're such a turd. Oh yeah, a giant turd. And you look like a turd and you smell like a turd. Number six, tree hats. This is tree hat, I repeat, this is tree hat. Is everybody in position? Need camouflage that's both stylish and functional? Look no further than the tree hat. 
Whenever anyone on the show, especially Katie or the boys, is on a reconnaissance mission, they make sure to don these leafy beauties and take cover in the bushes. Then again, you were gone for six weeks, and that guy is way better looking than me. Not only are they biodegradable, but they're also incredibly handy for whenever the cast is on a stakeout, shamelessly spying on one of their friends, or in need of fast-selling merchandise to pitch at a marketing meeting. Was the eye black really necessary? No. The music really sets the tone, don't you think? They may seem silly and impractical to Gustavo and everyone else, but our dogs know that the tree hats have helped them in more ways than anyone can imagine. On it! No tree hats! Um, tree hats have solved a lot of problems. And they're awesome. Number five, comedic fainting. Let's face it, the world around the Big Time Rush cast is chaotic and dangerous, and sometimes you just need to shut down, and sometimes you don't really have a choice. This figure skating. Whenever anyone on the show gets too injured or overloaded, either physically or emotionally, they're guaranteed to go tumbling down to the floor. What makes this particular gag so funny is the comedic energy the characters have when they faint, and how none of them are afraid to literally come crashing down. See. <laughs> Arguably the king of the Pratt Falls is James, because when he takes the fall, he adds an extra dramatic yet hilarious flair as he hits the floor. Is it so? <sighs> Number four, Katie versus Mr. Bitters. Kendall's little sister Katie shows a lot of street smart and business savvy for a girl her age. You're gonna take over this town with colored ice? No. First, I reinvest my profits into the booming agribusiness sector, quarter the market in soy futures to make a cool hundred mil, then combine cash and stock options to purchase a major movie studio, then take over this town. <laughs> Aren't you a widow tycoon? The one thing she definitely thrives on the most is outsmarting the Palm Woods grumpy manager, Mr. Bitters. Throughout the series, we've watched these two go back and forth. Katie rebelling against Bitter's authority, and Bitter's arrogantly trying to undercut a pesky little girl, only to fail at every attempt. Even when it seems like Bitter's finally has the upper hand, or Katie personally hands him a win, luck is never on his side. Bitter's! 300 bucks in the stand is yours. Deal. Let's roll. Snow cones, get your snow cones. City Alpha Spectre. Please show me your license for operating this food cart or I have to fine you $500. It's a treat when we see these rivals get along, but it's always funnier watching them clash in the timeless battle of kid versus adult. Number three, you bet I did. Whenever James has anything to declare, he tends to repeat it for emphasis. Logan is usually the one to point out that he said something twice, and all James can say in response is, you bet I did. You bet I did. James doesn't care how redundant it sounds. We're not even sure he knows the meaning of the word. He'll repeat what he has to say as many times as he wants just to fully emphasize its importance, though nobody else really gets it. All aboard the Malibu Beach party, party bus. You said party twice. You bet I did. Add to it, this gag offers a hilarious back and forth between the more practical Logan and the confident and not so bright James. So the joke isn't that redundant after all. We are the Supertastic Super Six. You said super twice. You made it. Number two, Gustavo's dogs. I realized today, sort of, that if you really want to train dogs properly, you need to throw them a treat now and then. So, Enjoy your treat. To Gustavo, all talents are dogs that need to be trained to be perfect, thus the term becomes his go-to nickname for the boys. While the boys can be a handful to manage, Gustavo takes things a little too far when he starts treating them like actual dogs, not unlike how his boss Griffin treats him. You were a good boy today, Gustavo. Good boy. However, as the series progressed and Gustavo became closer to the boys, he started to see them less as a troop of dogs and more like a family so the nickname became less derogatory and more like a term of endearment by the lone wolf for his pack. Let's just say every now and then, the lone wolf needs his pack. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few big time honorable mentions. Oh yeah, and when the Jennifers moved here, they walked in normal motion. 
The crown will be mine. Is this about that stupid crown you guys made in middle school? I can't see! No, because I'm sick and tired of you dogs breaking stuff! Uh, we don't, we don't we're really crazy. Crazy. What are we doing? What are we doing? The new XZ5 micro laptop. Look how tiny. And we could all wear bandanas. It, it could be our thing. Bandanas. <laughs> Where is he? Okay, no, Camille, please not now. I've got a lot of work to do and I'm free. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Carlos's Helmet Carlos! You need to get rid of your helmet! Ah, what? Why? With how crazy things get on this show, it's no wonder Carlos is almost never seen without his trademark helmet, even when he isn't playing hockey. To Carlos, the helmet is more than just protective headwear. It's a security blanket and practically his best friend. He even treats it like a person. He'll go to great lengths to ensure that he never loses the helmet. And even if he does, nothing will stop him until he gets it back. Carlos, you know I have a black belt, and you don't know it! You want me to come up there and take that helmet from you? Bring it! Others may not like the helmet, but Carlos doesn't care. He wears it no matter how silly it looks. In a way, we can all learn from Carlos about enjoying or wearing whatever we like, despite what others think of us. Why do I wear the helmet? <laughs> Rock. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.